Papa, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm re I'm being recorded. Okay. My name is Eva. I I moved here in 1979 from Ikoryak, tiny tiny little village. Uh, my parents are the late Jerry and Eula David, and if you know them, they were um, very religious and. My story is so much more funny if you knew my parents because um, the things we did to torment our parents, I can't believe what kind of story I'm going to tell you. No, actually, it feels like a confession. <laughs> so this is 1982. Uh, we moved, remember in 1979, I moved here. We, we, we moved to housing on Second Road, one of those tiny little houses. And um, by the time my parents moved here, my, they were older, they were in their 50s. And if you know them, they're very hardworking, uh, very religious, very kind people. And that meant they um, would get up every day at five o'clock. So by the time we, we moved to Bethel, um, it was just three boys, uh, three, three, two or three of us, my two brothers and myself. I'm the youngest of nine kids, so it was myself and my two older brothers who were five, four and five years older than me. My dad bought a little tiny white pickup truck and he needed to use it to go to work over at BIA. And this was something that he valued really um, because it, it meant um, it was a workhorse for him. Now, when, when we grew up at that house, it was really hard to follow rules. We had to turn the light off at nine o'clock, TV off at nine, in bed by nine o'clock every night. It was horrible. I don't know what my parents thought being 12. How, how do you live? How do you live like that? So we came up with a solution. We came up with a plan. I don't know who, who first came up with the story, but um, it was, we were going to steal my dad's truck. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you how I did it. First of all, can't wear anything loud. Remember, my parents are sleeping. And the house is really tiny, so you can't wear anything like this. So I had to set it aside. Usually I would put my shoes and my coat by the door, and I'd tell my brothers, stay outside and wait out there for me. So you don't want to mess this up. This is the hardest part. So. Here I am, I'm, I'm slowly walking to my parents' bedroom because my dad doesn't trust my brothers. So he kept the car keys in his pants pocket. <laughs> and he laid those pants by his bed every night. So here I am, slowly walking to my parents' part of the bedroom in housing. It's a tiny house, there's no walls. There's only this partition that separates their bedroom from the rest of the house. Now I'm listening for my dad. I, I know his snore, and I know that's the cue for me to get going. <laughs> so by the time I get to their partition, I have to sort of crawl and open it, because I have to look at what position my mom's laying at. She, she's the one that would lay closest to where the pants were. My dad slept on the inside. She slept on the outside. So. I'd have to gaze and slowly look at her face. And if she's facing the wall, that was easy. It only meant that I'd have to slowly, quietly, very quietly, <laughs> go to dad's pants that are on the floor and very quietly take the keys out of the pants pocket. But if her face was towards the floor where I met right here, that's something else. I would literally have to crawl very, very quietly. <laughs> now, when you're doing this, you can't really breathe that much. 
so it takes a lot of time and effort to slowly crawl to the pants and then slowly put your hands in dad's pocket. Then you have to hold the keys for dear life because you don't want them to jingle and wake mom up, right? And here I am, I'm scared, really, really scared. And I'm really, really excited because that little truck is gonna open up the world for me. I have to get out of that house. And so once you get past that partition, it's easy peasy. You slowly sort of tiptoe back to the door, grab your your shoes and your in your loud jacket, right? And my brothers are outside waiting. Now we get inside the truck, put the truck in neutral. You don't start it because dad'll wake up. <laughs> this is what you do. You you push the truck out of the um, little place and then right onto the road and then you can get into the truck and then you can start it. How is that? Now, back in 1982, everybody had money. The um, commercial fishing was on and this was summertime. So us kids were driving around. I don't think my brothers had a license. I certainly didn't. We'd stop, we'd first drive by Q1. Remember Q1, QFC1? Then we'd head towards town. And if we were lucky enough, maybe the brass buckle is open, the disco. It's now called the Pentecostal church. <laughs> what happened to Bethel, guys? Anyways, we're too young to get in, but that's not the point. You want to park at AC watching everybody because that's, that's what's really fun. Some days we'd be lucky and you might see somebody get into a fight or maybe the police chasing somebody. <laughs> Anyways, we'd just keep going and we'd have to do our mandatory tour around Slough and just to see who's, what's going on. And then we'd do the loop around Bethel all night long. <laughs> That's what we did to have fun. That truck really opened up the world to me. <laughs> oh, that was really the only time my brothers and I got along. <laughs> and I'm really glad for that experience. They taught me how to drive stick shift in that little truck. We would stop at, at the pit and once in a while they'd let me drive. So I got something good out of that. The other thing is I got to learn who ACDC was. <laughs> Because they would pop that little cassette into my dad's tape recorder in his truck. And this was actually a gift for my boys because I passed on that love of ACDC on to them. <laughs> something I value. Anyways, we had to be done by 4 a.m. because remember, dad gets up at 5. So we would quietly turn the car off and slowly bring it back to the front of the house and quietly get out, and again, it's my job to put the keys back in Dad's pants pocket. So the day wasn't done yet until it was time to come in. Then I'd do the reverse, I'd quietly go back in. Then I'd go in to check on the partition and look at where Mom's head is facing. <laughs> then if I'm lucky enough she's not looking, I could just go and put the keys back in the pocket. We've never, ever been caught to this day. <laughs> Thank you.